Okay, another method of testing for parasitic drain is measuring the voltage drop across the fuses. Now, if we know what the resistance is of an object and we measure the voltage drop across that object, we can use Ohm's law to calculate the current through that object. And that's the idea here. I'm going to measure the voltage drop of each of these fuses and uh, rather than doing Ohm's law, I'm going to rely on a published chart that will give an approximate current flowing through the fuse based on the voltage flowing through it. Again, I can do this for each one. All right, I've got nothing really flowing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. All right, I'm going to skip to the chase. I know where the problem is. If you watch the earlier videos about parasitic drain, you know I've got a light bulb powered across that data link connector. And here we go. I've got a 10 amp mini fuse that is showing 12.6 or 12.7 millivolts dropped across it. My next step then is going to be to consult a chart and we're going to see the approximate amperage. All right. I've got a variety of charts. This, I've only got one. I've got one for the mini uh, fuses here. And uh, I can thank the folks from Power Probe, uh, John Hunt, and the folks of Power Probe, uh, well, actually gave me these charts, and uh, they're allowing me to use them in the classroom. So I can pass these out to you students, and you can do this at work if you choose to do so. Now, I'm going to home in on a couple things here. One, I'm looking for my 10 amp mini fuse. So, 10 amp mini right, fuse. Here's the 10 amp, it's the red. And unfortunately, <laughs> I don't have a smart board that I can use to uh, show you this. Otherwise, I could have just done the pretty colors and matched them all, but I don't. So, I'll probably just circle it. So, there's the. Uh, 10 millivolts is the largest this scale gives me, and I've got uh, 12.6, so I know I'm going to be higher than whatever this is. So I'm going to follow this over, and uh, I'll just have to point to my with my finger there what our amperage happens to be. Right there, I've got 1,348 milliamps, or 1.3, almost 1.35 amps, but that's for 10 millivolts. And again, I've got 12.6 uh, or 12.7, so I know I've got more than that. So 1.3 amps is way more than our 50 milliamp maximum parasitic drain. So I know for a fact that there is a problem, and then I do just like we did with the other videos. Uh, I found the power schematic or power distribution schematic, see what all is being powered or protected by that 10 amp fuse and I check each circuit one at a time to find the parasitic drain. Now, there's another tool that we can use that does this same thing, only it does kind of the calculations and lookup for us. And uh, I'll go ahead and show you that now. Okay, here's a tool. Uh, this tool is from uh, Bluepoint or Snap-on. Uh, it's called the Amp Pound. This is going to do kind of the same thing we just did with a DVOM or a millivolt meter and uh, looking the values up, only it's going to do it uh, for us. I'm going to have to obviously take the probes, I'll put those across the fuse, but then this little device here will tell me what it is once I enter some information. So, all right, we'll turn the tester on. Now, I need to enter the fuse type. Now, this is going to uh, give me either the mini, the standard, the ATO or ATC, and then the maxi type fuse. So. That'll be the uh, mini. There's the standard. That'll be the maxi. So let's go back down to the bottom. Since we're dealing with a mini, now I have to tell it the value. I'm dealing with a 10 amp mini. Now, if I do not have the selection here, I'm going to try and hold this, see if it's going to let me do that. All right, now it is taking those values, and uh, now it's going to allow me to take the measurement. Now, if I don't have the same amp value fuse uh, available here on this machine. They're instructing me to use the closest in value, realizing that it's not going to be the exact same uh, amp value, but uh, again, uh, that's some of the limitations of the machine. So 
let's give this a whirl. I'm going to take this over. We're going to take a look over at our fuse. I think it was number nine, we know. is the one that has at least a current draw of that light bulb. All right, I know this is the fuse that has the problem, so I'm going to go ahead and measure that. Let's see what happens. All right, it's telling me that it is pulling 1.7 amps. And that's about what it uh, what that light bulb itself was pulling. Now we had another 0.4 to 0.5 amps in another circuit, if you recall from the other video. Uh, so this gave me a really, really close reading to what that light bulb is actually pulling. Now something else about this machine, if I go across a fuse that has no power or no current, so it says, I have a solid beeping, okay, and I'm showing zeros. But when I get to one that is hot, as the instructions call it, I had the beep, 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 and it's giving me the number there. So again, this can allow you to go through and test very rapidly as long as you're not switching from fuse type to fuse type. Again, if you can't actually get up there and see both the machine and your fuses, well, if I get up there to one that has a problem, it gives me the beep beep beep, and it's going to hold that value for me. So I can look at the machine and see what I had. Okay, it's telling me right there it was set for a 10 amp fuse, 10 amp mini fuse, and it's 1.7 amps. So, pretty nice tool. Now, the nice thing about the doing the millivolt tests. Uh, as well as doing a test like this, is that I don't have to unplug fuses. I don't have to disconnect the battery to install an ammeter or parasitic drain switch. I can do all of this without really interrupting anything. And uh, again, the nice thing about that is, uh, well, for one, a time savings. I don't have to disconnect things, put them back in again. Also, if I pull the fuse out and put it back in again and I start waking up computers, I've got again maybe 20 to 40 minute wait before they go to sleep before I start doing more testing. So again, uh, really pretty nice tool there and uh, hopefully if you uh, get one of these, you'll, you'll discover that you like it as well.